Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about books that I love but never really talk about. There's so many books that I have read and sometimes they just aren't talked about as much by me. Like they slip my mind, not because they're not good, it's just because I'm constantly reading more books, getting exposed to more stories and material. So sometimes books are kind of forgotten and put in the back burner and I feel bad, but I still have all these feelings for them. And I just want to shed light to them today and talk about these books that I absolutely love but don't really get to speak about very often. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first book that I wish I talked about more is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This book is definitely a five out of five stars for me. I absolutely loved it, even more than The Hate You Give. This book was just so much fun. When I was reading it, I was just sucked into it completely. And I actually have a reading vlog of me reading this, I believe. So I'll put a card wherever the cards go because I don't know. This book is about Brie who is a young rapper in her neighborhood and I believe it's Garden Heights. It's not like the best area and it's the same setting, I believe, as The Hate You Give. Like it's Garden Heights, right? I don't know, I think it is, but it's not the best area. A lot of people don't have a lot of money and resort to drugs and drug dealing and everything and her father actually was murdered when she was really young. He was actually a pretty big known rapper in her town and she got talent from those beautiful jeans that her father gave her and ooh, the sticker. It just... Okay. <laughs> so she got the talent from her father and her dream is to make a living off of her rapping and she's really good even though like I can't hear her physically because I read I read the book and I, I didn't listen to the audiobook but the raps are just so good and I'm not even that big into rap. I never have been. I am actually taking a hip-hop analysis class in college for some reason like I'm not even into that music pretty much at all but I find it interesting to learn about and it's definitely exposing me to a lot of history that I just wasn't aware of and definitely puts a greater light on what Brie herself is doing and it's just so cool. I found myself literally like singing her songs over and over again in my head. I didn't even know the true beat to the raps yet they were just that catchy that I would just be like, you can't stop me on the come up. You can't stop me on the come up. Like it's just so good. <laughs> And I loved her friendships that she had in this book and the romance definitely was not a focal point of this book as well as it was for The Hate You Give, but it was better done. That's not like the good grammar way to say that, I don't think. It, it was, it was done better. <laughs> and you could actually like kind of ship it a little bit, but it definitely wasn't the focus, especially a lot of this book has to do with the security guards of her high school treating her unfairly and she makes a whole rap song about it and it kind of explodes in her town and they're like going up against these stupid school people, you know? And I just like this one better than The Hate You Give, to be honest. It's less heavy, like it does deal with hard topics, but you know, no one died. Like The Hate You Give, like someone was murdered you know, like, it was definitely way sadder. This one gave us more joyous moments, like, a lot more fun moments. This book is so good, and you definitely need to read it, and I can't wait for a movie to come out for it. The next book is one that's perfect for spooky reading times, so if you want a good spooky read, I got you, and it is Misery by Stephen King. This is definitely my favorite one that I have read by him so far. I haven't read that many, but you know, I know Brittany is rolling her eyes right now because she hates Stephen King, <laughs> but I am a fan. I collect his books, even though I still like, I haven't read all of them, you know, I'm terrible. <laughs> But this one, I actually have a review of it, so I have discussed it, but ever since then, not really. This one, oh, this one's just my type of spooky. Like, okay, it's more of a psychological aspect. Basically, the main character, I forgot his name. 
Paul Sheldon. He is a best-selling novelist and has this series that a lot of people are invested in and that includes this girl named Annie. I think it's Annie, not Anne. It's Annie. Okay, Annie Wilkes. One day, Paul Sheldon is going down like a snowy pathway or whatever and he gets in a car crash and Annie Wilkes finds him and takes him back to her home. He has like broken legs and everything but she doesn't take him to the hospital. No, she decides she wants to care for him personally in her home because she has a past as a nurse but still why not take him to the hospital man like oh my gosh Paul realizes that this woman never plans to let him go she is his biggest fan and she's obsessed with him but recently he killed off one of her favorite characters in his book and she wants him to rewrite the book or write a new book where that character lives on and this is literally like the crazy fangirl gone wrong and it's so interesting annie is terrifying she gets scarier and scarier throughout the book and we just see paul trying to escape but he can't really because his both of his legs are broken he is stuck in a bed and he doesn't know how to fight back and most of this is just in Paul's head. It's so good. This book is very, very scary even though we take place in only just one room mostly. If that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend. The next book that I don't talk about enough is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This book is definitely a heavy hitter. It has a dark topic, so trigger warnings, for sexual assault and rape but the main character I think her name is Mara. Mara has a twin brother named Owen and one day she finds out from his girlfriend which is kind of a friend of hers that he raped her friend and it basically follows the point of view of Mara like her brother raped someone and her twin brother you know I've never really thought about the perspective of being family members of the rapist and how difficult that may be to process that someone you really loved did something so disgusting and terrible. This one really tackles that idea and it was just so interesting to get that perspective. If you are good for these type of topics and conversations that this brings up, I highly recommend it. It's a phenomenal one and the main character is bisexual so that adds to it. The next book that I should talk about more is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. This book is also a bisexual main character and she is eyeless. She doesn't have eyes. She just has a face <laughs> and some lips and a nose and she wears masks over her face and basically she can still see somehow and she can create illusions with her mind. It's been a while, so I might mess this up, but she lives in this carnival thing. I don't remember what it's called, but this carnival and her fake father, the guy that adopted her, runs the carnival <laughs> or the festival. I don't know what it's called, the circus. It's a festival. Okay, whatever, you get it. And a lot of weird things go on in this festival, some wacky crap. There's a really cute little romance in this book, but Basically, the main plot of this is she creates illusions and these illusions are actually creating like real beings. So she can create friends and they live and breathe and talk. And she doesn't really know like much about them on if they're like really real or like can they die? But we find out real quick that they can die because someone in the freaking festival is starting to murder off her illusions. And these illusions, she considers them family. So this is devastating for her. And she ends up going to the dark side of the festival to go get some help from this dude. I believe his name is Luca. He is demisexual, I believe. But he is going to help her figure out like what is happening, who is murdering the illusions and everything. It was definitely fun, very atmospheric. It definitely made me hungry for some carnival foods. <laughs> it's not the best book I ever read, but it was highly entertaining. I read it from the library originally and I had to buy myself a copy. The next one is Flawed by Cecilia Ahern. I actually have a really old book review on this one. Don't watch it. It was actually a sponsored thing. Like I got sent this book and I ended up really loving this book. And there is a second book that I got 
but I have never continued to read and I really want to reread this book and move on to that one and see if this book is as good as I remembered it to be but it was super super cool at least years ago when I read it and it's basically about this girl forgot her name Celestine I don't really know how to say her name correctly. Celestine, Celestine. Basically, she lives in a world where there is the perfect people and the flawed people. And it's like a dystopia. So if you do one wrong thing in the government's eyes, you get burned in a certain place that tells everybody like what sort of thing you did that made you flawed. So one person does something stupid and they'll get like a burn on their hand and they're flawed forever and they are not allowed to associate really with the perfect people. Basically their lives are turned completely upside down. They have like curfews and stuff. It's been a while so I can't exactly remember everything that like happens to them, but it's pretty messed up. You can do something like so normal and simple and they say you're flawed and they're just so against like anybody different and anything like that. And the main character ends up becoming the most flawed person in the entire country. So she gets five flawed marks I think and I forgot like what the heck she does like that causes this but it's really stupid. I'm pretty sure she helps a flawed person when they were in need. That's just a nice thing for a person to do and she ends up becoming the most flawed person in history and it ends up being like this huge deal and people are following her around like getting her like like feelings and like what am I saying but I promise this is good at least from my memory, but it's crazy to see how her life completely turns upside down from being such a good girl with school. Like she's always getting the good grades. Like she's just perfect in a sense. And then she becomes the most flawed person in the country. And it's just the way this happens and what happens to her in this book, it's just insane. And it was one of those books that you just couldn't help but flip the pages. It was just so interesting. So I really wanna reread this and see if it's just as good as I remember so I can continue on with the next book. The next one I've mentioned a few times in my latest videos, so maybe it doesn't work for this video, but I'm gonna mention it anyways. And that is The Last Namsar by Kristen Sicarelli. I read this a few years ago from the library and I recently purchased my own copy because I want to read the other two books and I just, I want to own it because I liked it. And it's basically about this girl named, I forgot her name, Asha. And she is a princess of this kingdom and she's a dragon slayer. She has burns up and down all of her body. And the thing about these dragons is that they are drawn out when people tell stories. So stories are banned at this point in this world. She kills these dragons for her father. And then she ends up having a love story with this servant dude. And then she finds out maybe things are not as they seem. <laughs> yeah, I, I went like that. Yeah, okay. It's super fun. Not the best thing I've ever read either, but the fantasy, the fun, like it's just, I recommend if you want a fun ride. I just said fun like 500 times. The next book is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This book is about a non-binary main character named Ben. <laughs> Sorry, I always forget. Oh, I got this signed. Oh, <laughs> I went to a book signing near me and it's actually pretty cool because this author, Mason Deaver, they live in North Carolina, which is where I'm from. And this book is actually set in North Carolina. And the signing I went to was in the city that this book is set in. So it was pretty cool that I went to the signing for where this book was based. And Mason was talking about how we could just go visit like some of the places for the scenes. I didn't do it, but <laughs> that would have been really cool. The main character, I don't know if I already said this, they're non-binary and at the beginning of the book their parents don't know that and actually the first chapter they finally come out to their parents and the worst case scenario honestly happens. The parents kick Ben out and it's really devastating and Ben has to call up their sister who they've lost complete contact with. She basically ran away from home and had issue with the parents and just never came back and never really talked to Ben again. But Ben had nothing else 
that they could do. So they called up the sister and the sister ends up taking Ben in and it's just a really wholesome story once we get to that part. And then Ben meets oh, Nathan and Nathan is a bisexual icon. He is a sweet pie, the cutest little dude. The energy he has is just so, we'll say cute. He is just a little cute little bean. I love him so much. And basically Ben and Nathan become really good friends, but throughout this book, Ben is still not out to these new people he has met. He is out to his sister and her husband, but Nathan still doesn't know that Ben is non-binary and they also like haven't talked about maybe having more feelings for each other other than just friendship. This one is just super good. It was heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, but it also had its most adorable moments and I just highly recommend this one. The next book I don't talk about as much as I should is Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. She actually has a author tube channel and it's really good. That's why I bought this book. And this book is a retelling of Jane Eyre but in space and I've never even read Jane Eyre and I'm not really into sci-fi either so it's very shocking that this book captured my attention the way it did. I absolutely loved it. The love story in this was my cup of tea. They literally read books together. He had a little library and he let her borrow it and they just read books together. I just I can't get enough of it. So basically the main character going off of the Jane Eyre premise. She goes and teaches on this ship called the Rochester and she's teaching this little girl that's on there and this Rochester ship is kind of weird like something's going on with this ship and she doesn't really know what's going on but she's interested in the captain. Captain Hugo is an interesting person and she can't help but be like intrigued and she is teaching his little sister and she's just slowly learning more and more about this family and the people on this ship. I didn't expect it to be so fun for me but this one I read like within two to three days and I think I read it for a readathon. It was just super easy to read and so fun. So I can't wait to see what else Alexa Dunn has in the future because I know she's still writing more books. So now we have reached the final book that I don't talk about nearly enough and this one is just so good. <laughs> a Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahra Mafi. Tahra Mafi wrote the Shatter Me series which we all know I really love that series and this one was no exception. This one is not a part of that series but it's just still so good. This author has some beautiful writing. I really love it. And this book is about a girl named Surin. I can't remember the exact pronunciation, but I think it's, I know there's like a thing with the R. So Surin, I may be completely wrong. So I'm sorry. It's just been a while. But Surin is a Muslim teenager and she does wear the head wrap or the hijab. Obviously in America, people just have a hard time dealing with people that are different than them. It just is talking about how hard this can make her life, how America, like after 9-11 and everything, like how much harder this is on her. And it's devastating at times, like, wow, it hurts. But there ends up being a really wholesome, cute little relationship in this book with this dude named Ocean. I believe his name is Ocean. Yes, Ocean. This cute romance literally had me squealing. It's the cutest thing ever, like, I just love how he treated Surin and I just love how their relationship developed over being like, I think they were like lab partners or something. Like if they really were lab partners, like why is every freaking YA romance have some lab partners? Like we got some Twilight. Like I know there's more, I'm just blanking. <laughs> this one is just a really impactful novel and I definitely just highly recommend it. it hits hard topics but also gives us that cute little romance that most of us really love. <laughs> so those are all the books that I'm going to be talking about today. I love all of them for different reasons and I'm glad I finally got to talk about them again because sometimes I just don't get to talk about some of my favorite books. Let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them. Love to read your comments. Like this video, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias which are linked down below and go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should have already clicked and goodbye.